Welcome to Channel AMEC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Ang Yang, your online YouTube visa consultant. Now in this video, I would like to discuss a very common ask questions. Uh, once you arrive in Australia and you've been working and you find out that your employer really satisfied your working performance and now they offer you a job, what do I do? What sort of visa can I get? I think that's a very, very frequent ask questions around the nations and I've been asked many, many times. So today I would like to take you with this pathway to get you where you can get for your visa. Now, apart from all this, we must know that the uh, with the regulation has been strictly uh, engineered uh, by the Australian government. Uh, if your background and your occupations uh, or, or qualification together does not match to the nature of the business of your employer now in that kind of sense uh, uh, no you cannot get any kind of visa uh, perhaps you might need to seek a possible qualification by adding more qualification and study perhaps in Australia now but if we going back to should your occupation or your background directly match uh, to the nature of the business of your employer of course that's an easy way to go now in this video i would like to take you to that pathway where if you could find out whether or not uh, this visa could be suitable for you and which we're going to discuss of the subclass 482 uh, which is the commonly known the working visa now working visa is very uh, fun in a, in a way they have been uh, put it into two different streams so one is the uh, now at the screen that you can see is the, the medium term stream and the other one is a short term stream now uh, the differences between short term and medium term stream uh, short term only allows you to continually uh, having a working visa but you can only renew once now medium term you can also renew once but it has an incentive it has an incentive that allows you to transfer to become a permanent residency after three years of employment now the two differences is the occupation list is different now i'm not going to go into that detail uh the detail that i believe we have put in our in our channel in the previous video so you can find that out now today's video is what's what you can do and how you need to find out uh, the pathway if you got offered a job by an Australian employer so first thing first that we want to know that we want you to know that the uh, this temporary skill short teach visa subclass 4a2 is the common working visa for employer to actually employ uh, overseas skilled workers obviously for the employers criteria there's a lot of um, things that you need to pass you need to become a standard business sponsorship now that's another video which I believe I put it uh, before so if you're an employer uh, watch that video you know what sort of criteria you need to pass now if you are the employee and you have suddenly you got a job and working there and your working performance is outstanding and your boss want you to stay there and work what do you do so first of all we need to go into the eligibility you need to be um, a certain age now you can see here it doesn't have any age requirement because if you're only required to get a working visa you can continuously working there forever as long as you want but you cannot transfer into a permanent resident okay so uh, if you want to become a permanent resident you have to do it before you reach the age of 45 okay now obviously you need to get a visa uh, if you're already in Australia so you can't just work you can't just stay in Australia unlawfully okay and you have comply all the visa conditions previously so generally people coming into this status are people holding working holiday visa 
or perhaps you're on a student visa or the graduate student graduate temporary visa okay and obviously you need to get approved sponsor now the thing here that we need to find we need to be uh, uh, putting in more attention is uh, obviously your qualification and your skill and your employment background has to match the nature of the business sponsor and that's what we have talked about and you need to prove that you have already got at least two years of full-time working experience in that occupation so if you're an accountant you need to show that you have been working as an accountant for two years you cannot just work for uh, as a bookkeeper for two years you that will not allow you to get this visa so if you're a chef and uh, you need to be a chef for at least two years you cannot be a chef and working as a a house hospitality assistant somewhere in the hotel that won't that won't count as work experiences so the main thing here is that the work experiences has to match with the occupation that you're actually in okay so uh, there has been people coming to me that they are in um, um, they, they, they study IT uh, back in the home countries and then they have traveled to Australia with their um, perhaps they uh, working hard a visa uh, and stay with the uh, somewhere in, in regional and found a job and which is a tourism industry and they got to become a tour guide possibly okay and they're working there for uh, six months or eight months and the employer said wow you, you know, you're great I want you to stay now in that sense not nah, can't do it because your background is IT that does not correlate or directly related to the nature of the business itself so that cannot be done now what I wanted to take you into further detail is this part is the have the positive skill assessment so what does that mean uh, there are certain requirements for uh, some certain uh, country or passport holders required to go through skill assessment and these skill assessment has to go through by trades recognition Australia and vet assess now those uh, occupation are pr primary in trades so that w I'm gonna take you straight uh, to the actual law there to show you what it is so as you can see here this is the part two of that specific legislative instrument uh, it basically spells out the specification of occupation etc which is going to match uh, the item 1240 uh, that is the validity requirement for lodging a subclass for a two temporary skill shortage visa now as you can see down here in this table here they are one two three four five six about 25 occupations and they are all in trades so uh, starting from automotive baker cam maker carpenter chef all the way cook diesel uh, fitter joiner uh, metal fabricator pa panel beater pastry work pastry cook now the only occupation here is managerial role is not a trade is this one program and pro project administrator and it requires to go to vet assess to to do a general pro professional occupation and apart from all that most of them like welders and all that uh, are required to go uh, as a trade now specialist manager here is very uh, interesting that's that's more for uh, as you can see archbishop and bishop uh, that's more for religious purpose there now coming down here under the uh, section 6 specification of class person now this table uh, reflects directly to the tables above so all the occupation here matches all the occupations on the tables above so there are 25 of them now the differences here is that it specify the actual uh, passport country of passport holders who is required who is not exempt in other words who is mandatory required to go through skill assessment so these passports if you hold these passports and you have been offered a job in Australia uh, you gotta be uh, take a detailed notice so you're holding a passport Brazil Fiji Hong Kong India Macau Philippines South Africa Thailand Vietnam and Zimbabwe and some of them have a little bit differences here so some of them does include China uh, so you can see uh, up here 
uh, Fiji. Now this automotive electrician doesn't have a China, but Baker does have China, and something that does have uh, Papua New Guinea in there. So this table is actually very um, important. So if you're a holder of passports of these countries and you have been offered a job in these trades uh, occupation under the um, uh, uh, for a two visa criteria, then obviously you know what to do. You are required to go through uh, skill assessment. Now, if we jump back here, it does saying that um, uh, here important. Now, this part I wanted to highlight here. Uh, okay. Now, this part says mentor school assessment is required. So, if you're those passport holders, uh, you're required to commence. Uh, that, that means your skill assessment doesn't have to be completed at the time of lodgements but at least you need to lodge the skill assessment before you lodge your visa okay and then obviously you wait for the skill assessment to be completed but the only thing here is that you need to gamble a bit that your result is positive so if they come back with a negative obviously the whole visa will fail as well now further on if we go on further in um, section 7 here it does spell out if you are already a passport a, a visa holder of 457 or 482 and uh, if your job does uh, occupation does not change you are just renewing uh, another working visa there you are exempt you do not require to go through skill assessment and number uh, and, and item B here uh, basically spells out that's for more of the international expansion or business part now uh, item 2 here it, it basically tells you uh, this is the trick because I think that's what the government wants as well if you hold an Australian qualification meaning that you have been studied abroad in Australia and your qualification has been approved and granted by an Australian institutions then you do not require to go through skill assessment as well so uh, that I think will cover most of what I wanted to uh, say and advise and notify all the uh, potential interest migrants wanted to come to Australia work if you've been offered a job what to do and where you need to find out whether or not you can actually meet the criteria and requirement uh, to get that 457 or 482 TSS visa. Anyway, should you have more query or questions, feel comfortable and more than welcome to leave a comment right below. And finally, uh, should you consider to subscribe to our channel so once we have more Australian visa insights, you shall be the first one to be notified. I see you in the next video. Goodbye.